So our goal at Erie is to make a major ophthalmic pharmaceutical company. Of course, we're going to start in the glaucoma field, as many of you know. We have two late-stage phase three assets. Now, Ropressa is a row kinase inhibitor with a active ingredient called Natarsidil. It's a row kinase inhibitor. It relaxes the trabecular meshwork to restore outflow through the primary drain of the eye. As Michael mentioned, <clears throat> our Perdufa date is February 28th. Roclitan is our fixed dose combination product containing both Natarsidil as well as Latanoprost. And <clears throat> in two phase three trials, Roclitan uh, met the primary endpoint of <clears throat> achieving statistical superiority in IOP lowering compared to each of the individual components. We plan on filing our NDA for Roclitan in the second quarter of next year. Now in our pipeline, we have three major projects. The first one is for Repressa, and a plan there is to show further differentiation for Repressa against currently, uh, currently marketed products. The first thing we'll do is look at Repressa's ability to lower pressure at night just as well as it does during the day, because that would be a major differentiation for Repressa. The second thing is showing Repressa's ability to lower pressure in patients with normal tension or low tension glaucoma, which is a deficiency in today's marketplace, and again, a major opportunity for Repressa. The final thing for Repressa is showing the potential for disease modification based on Repressa's ability to uh, show antifibrotic activity in the human trabecular meshwork, which we showed in cultured human trabecular meshwork cells. The second priority, of course, is to advance our preclinical stage retina products, AR13154, which you probably haven't heard much about, but we hope you will through the future, and I'll share a little bit about that now. And of course, the product we recently acquired from Invisia, that is AR1105 for DME. The final thing is taking those preclinical product candidates and putting them together with the drug delivery technologies that we've acquired recently and brought in to make um, sustainable release implants that'll last hopefully four to six months in delivering medications. Now, on to uh, the big news for Repressa. Of course, the big news is the votes we received from the FDA Advisory Committee just a few weeks ago. After the presentations, the committee was asked two questions. Number one, does the product demonstrate efficacy or do, do, does the data show efficacy of Repressa? And you could see the results were 10-0 in favor of Repressa, so uh, obviously resounding support. The second question, do, they, do the benefits outweigh the risks? It's a stereotypic benefit risk question. As you could see, nine votes in favor of Repressa versus one. So overall, resounding support from the advisory committee, and we're very thrilled with that. Hopefully we think that speaks very, very positively about the future potential for Repressa. Now, what does the data show? Well, in three phase three trials, Repressa, dosed once a day, was able to show non-inferiority against Timolo, dosed twice a day. In a fourth phase three trial, Repressa was shown to be non-inferior to Latanoprost. All of this, by the way, was in patients with IOP below 25. From the safety standpoint, the, the most common AE was hyperemia, which is around a 50% incident rate. 80% of the time it was mild, and 90% of the time it was highly sporadic. It came and went. The next two most popular AEs, corneal verticillata and conjunctival hemorrhage, were mild in nature. They were asymptomatic and had no impact on a patient's visual function. So overall, a highly efficacious product with a very favorable benefit-risk ratio, as you saw in the votes from the FDA panel. Now, as you might guess, we're running very rapidly towards launching this product. We've built our, our senior leadership and our sales, our marketing, our marketing access, and our medical affairs teams, and they are very busy building out the rest of their organization. We're fortunate that attracting talent has not been a big issue for us because we have an awful lot of positive noise about our products out in the marketplace and people are quite excited. We also saw that just not in the practitioner marketplace, but also in the managed care marketplace. In fact, our managed care team, our, man our market access team, and our medical affairs team have been out giving presentations and category reviews to managed care organizations who request them, and we've been received exceptionally well. We've also found, our KO also found our way to many podiums in key major ophthalmic and opt optometric meetings so far this year. As you can see, we've given nine podium presentations this year. The interesting thing is the number of meetings in which we've given not just one presentation, but two, three, and four presentations at the same meeting based on the strength of the data we have, so very high interest level. Switching over to Roclitan, this is a responder analysis from one of our phase three trials we did with Roclitan. Now what this shows is the proportion of patients in each arm of the study that achieves certain levels of IOP lowering. So the blue bar is Roclitan, the red is Latanoprost, and the green bar, of course, is Ropressa. A couple things you can see. First, a statistically significant proportion of patients in the Roclitan arm achieved each level of IOP 
uh, as compared to either latanoprost or repressed alone. And it gets very impressive, according to our practitioner friends, when you get down to the lower IOPs, like the percentage that got down below 16, 15, and actually 14 millimeters of mercury based on just one drop a day. So very good performance for roclitan. But the other thing that sticks out is just how well Ropressa performed against latanoprost. If you look at that same uh, group of folks between 16, lower than 16, lower than 15, lower than 14, and how well they did comparing Ropressa to latanoprost is also very, very impressive. From an AE standpoint for roclitan, it's much like we saw with Ropressa. About 50% of the patients have hyperemia, but again, it's mild in the vast majority of cases. And remember also that about 20% of the patients actually enter the trial uh, before the drug is initiated with hyperemia to begin with. The other AEs were commonly associated with, with Repressa and with Latanoprost. So now it's time to enter our next chapter of, of our life here at, at Aerie, and it's now going to be about retina with us as well, too. And what we have, as I said, we have two preclinical candidates, eight, uh, AR13, uh, 154, which I'm going to spend the rest of my time talking about, and a little bit about the drug delivery uh, that we brought into our company. So, 13154 is a first in class multi kinase inhibitor. It inhibits both protein kinase C as well as row kinase, which are different MOAs for attacking uh, the retina diseases. They're not anti VEGF products. 13154 was selected after we tested about 180 of our compounds against a battery of about 450. Uh, human kinases, and it was based on the fact that 13154 had very good activity against vascular dysfunction, fibrosis, and inflammation. Great markers or common markers for retina disease. A little bit of data shows some preclinical work with, we did with 13154 versus ILEA in the oxygen-induced retinopathy model for diabetic retinopathy, of course, in the mouse. What we found, if you look at the bars in the middle, the performance of 13154 equaled that of ILEA, which by itself is obviously a very good result, early but very good result. But if you go to the far bar on the right, it shows even better performance when the two products are used adjunctively, which is what you would hope for because they have complementary MOAs, and that's exactly what we got. So this may speak to 13154 is a monotherapy as well as an adjunctive therapy for, for diabetic retinopathy. We also took 13154 in the model for wet AMD, and we found if you go to the far bars on the right, then in the highest concentration, 13154 again equaled the performance of ILEA. So both in a diabetic retinopathy model as well as a wet AMD model, we found our performance very good. Now again, very early stage, but all the studies excite us and get us running towards this retina market as rapidly as we possibly can. Now, to add more fuel to our retina program, we've uh, recently acquired the print technology from Invisia Therapeutics. Print technology is <clears throat> a fully scalable manufacturing process that creates sustained release uh, implants that can be implanted into the, into the eye of the patient. And we think that uh, we can work with this product and hopefully get implants that will elude medications over a four to six month period of time. So what we plan on doing is taking our product 13154, working with the DSM technology that we licensed a couple months ago to make bio implants to then get them manufactured by what we have now from Invisia to make these implants, as I said, that would elude medication over a four to six month period of time, and that's our target profile. So please stay tuned for that. So I'll wrap this up by saying our key priorities going forward with Repressa is obviously getting the final FDA approval and running as fast as we can from a commercialization standpoint. For Roclitan, we have two key priorities. One is doing our phase three trial in Europe, and we, that's well underway now. We need to complete that. And of course, filing our NDA in the second quarter of next year. I'll skip down to the business development activities and just focus on our geographic expansion. We've been in front of the PMDA as well as the EMA to determine our, our clinical paths that we need to do. We need to follow those, and we are, because we have our Japanese trials now going on here with Japanese and Japanese Americans in phase one and phase two for Repressa. And we need to, as I said, keep following up with our Mercury 3 trial in Europe to make sure we get those registered as rapidly as we possibly can. I'll leave you with this last slide, and this is a slide that you can see off our website. It tracks our key milestones. The only key milestone not listed on this slide it, that's listed here or that I didn't mention is the fact that we'll be filing Repressa in Europe at the end of next year uh, seeking our MMA approval. So with that, I'll say again, thank you very much. And have a good day.